All right, welcome back. Let's keep focusing on arrays. So you now know how to define an array, which is good, and you can loop over them. But yeah, what about situations where you need to interact with individual items within that array? For example, if I wanna grab this value here from the books array, uh, how do I do that? What is the appropriate syntax? And actually, it's not too hard. Within a paragraph tag, I want to echo out this item here. So I know I'm working with the books array, and if I count one, two, yeah, it's almost like I wanna do something like this. Go into the books array and give me the second item. And actually, that's not too far off. We can use brackets here like this, but it's not gonna give you the result you might expect. Let's have a look. Refresh, and yeah, I get Project Hail Mary instead of one, two, the Langoliers. So I asked for the Langoliers, but you gave me the third item instead, which is really confusing until you realize that for most programming languages, if you're working with a list, it will be zero based, which effectively means the very first item will have an index of zero, and then you count up from there. So in this case, it would be zero, one, two. So now we can see when I said books two, think of that as give me the second index uh, effectively from the books array. All right, zero, one, two, Project Hail Mary. And sure enough, that's what we get. So in our case, if we actually want the Langoliers, well, zero, one. So I would update this like so, and that works. And of course, if I want the very first item, again, that would be an index of zero. And that's how I would grab it. All right, very cool. But now let's take it even further. Most of the time you will require more data than simply the title of the book, right? Uh, for example, who is the author of the book? Is there a description of the book? Uh, what about the category? Is it horror or sci-fi? You know, things like that. But how do I represent that data, that associated data, when all I have here is a string, you know? Well, think about it like this. First item of any array. In this case, I have a string, but it doesn't have to be a string. If I wanted it to, it could be, um, excuse me, it could be an integer, it could be a number, it could be a Boolean, or it could even be another array. And what's cool about this is now I have a sort of container or a folder for information specifically about a single book. For example, the name of the book, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? Uh, the author of the book, is Philip K. Dick. And then a URL to where we can purchase the book. And yeah, this is definitely an improvement. So now if you add more books, just add more arrays. And we'll do one more. Project Hail Mary is written by Andy Weir. And then once again, some kind of URL to buy the book. But there is one issue here. If I come back to this code six months from now, I may not remember what that URL is for. Is it a URL to purchase the book? Is it a URL to download the PDF after you purchased it? Is it a URL to the author's website? You know, you just don't know. And it would be nice if there was a way to associate a key with each value here. And in PHP, we can do that. It's called an associative array. Kind of a fancy term, but it just literally means associating a key with a value, like a key value pair. So let's do this one. What would be a good key for this? Well, it's the name of the book, right? So let's call it name. And I create the association by making an arrow. So I have a fancy font that makes this arrow look pretty. Yours may not do that, but it doesn't matter. All I'm typing here is the equal sign and then a greater than sign. So let's do another one. Well, author, right? So author, arrow, and then this could be purchase URL. Yeah, and the way I think of it is this key points to that value this key points to that value, and this key points to that value. And one last little thing here, notice how I made that U capital. And this is a basic convention uh, for many languages. If you have more than one word, make the first letter of the new word capital, okay? So again, you might see some people do this, that's fine as well. Conventions can be followed or ignored, you know, it's up to you. And we'll talk about that more in the future. Okay, so now let's do this one too. Here's the name, here's the author. And here is the purchase URL. Okay, I'm liking this. So now check this out. If I wanna loop over it like we did in the last episode, well, once again, PHP for each books as book, and I'm gonna use the alternative syntax, 
end for each. Now, in the last episode, we echoed out the book itself, right? But that's not going to work. And already you can see my editor is, is kicking up a fuss, and we'll see that in the browser too. Yeah, so what's happening here is when we loop over the books array, each item now within that loop is not a string. It's an array itself. So we're basically saying, ah, print the array to the screen. And PHP is going, huh, I don't, I don't know what you want me to do here. So it sounds like we actually want to print the name uh, within that array. OK. So you'll remember at the beginning of the video, we learned that we could access items within an array by using numbers. But when you're working with an associative array, you can instead use the key itself, sort of like an identifier. So in this case, let's replace it with name. And now we will get exactly what we had before. All right, very cool. So let's think about it. Let's extend it now. Maybe I don't just want the name of the book. I also want a link to where you can purchase the book. So let's add an anchor tag. And yeah, we kind of want something like this. All right, come back, give it a refresh. And ideally, each of those books will link to a unique URL to where you can buy the book. And we already have the purchase URL, so let's reference that. Book purchase URL. Okay, and if I come back, give it a refresh. Yeah, look in the bottom left portion of the screen, and it is working. Okay, so you're making really good progress, and you're starting to learn how you can construct slightly more complex data sets. And, and trust me, you can take this even further once you learn a bit more. OK, but I think we're going to call it a day here. Uh, a quick note before I let you go. If you're watching this at Laracast.com, if you look below the description of every video, there will be a short 5 to 10 minutes max uh, homework that I would encourage you to work through just to make sure that what you watched here is being committed to memory. And if you're instead watching uh, at something like YouTube, go to phpforbeginners.com, find the episode number, and then you also can work through the homework. Okay, so onward to the next video. I hope you're excited. I'll see you later.